In this episode, I will be designing the first explorer probes that will be going interplanetary. And when I talk interplanetary, I'm talking Duna and Eve. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be quickly constructing, and it's the similar design and the process that I do for all of my satellites, more or less, except that this one will be more focused on having a good amount of delta V so that it can, once it comes to the target system, whether it's Duna or Eve, because it's being designed to go primarily to Duna and Eve, uh, it should have enough delta V to get to the in-orbit low. It should probably have a chance to go to its satellite, so we can visit Ike and uh, Gilly and get some science from their orbits or their, you know, flybys. So that's kind of the idea. So I'm actually putting some batteries, struts, then I'm putting some tanks. I'm looking in between these toroidal tanks or, you know, the regular circle tanks or something. I'm just trying to come up with a decent design. And actually, I'm not, not liking this toroidal too much. So I'm actually thinking I'm gonna go with the initial idea of cubic strut, and then we put this circular tanks, four of them, and then we stick this. I think that looks good enough. It's like a mini interplanetary, you know, Voyager. So I, I like it. Let's cram the big antenna on the top and that one should be enough. That one should have 25 gigameter range and I think that should be enough to reach Duna and Eve. Uh, Communitron 16 for Omni communication. Then we need some solar panels. I'm gonna cram four. Uh, and then I'm gonna be, gonna be putting some, uh, hold on, where are these reflectrons? I'm gonna put these lower because I need science experiments on top. So let's see what science experiments we can cram. Thermometer, uh, gravioli, obviously, uh, the pressure sensor. We have the magnetometer boom that needs to be placed somewhere as well. Let me just try and get some angle on those. All right, uh, then we have the Gorsat, we have the orbital telescope. So that one needs to be placed somewhere. Okay, makes sense. Put it up, son. Okay, it looks decent. Now, the telescope. Okay, that goes here, that goes there. So, all of the experiments are crammed. That's good, I would say. And that's the deep space exploration. I mean, it's not deep space, it's inner planets exploration, so inner system exploration. So, that's something that I think makes sense. All right. Custom 1, activate, custom 2, yeah, there we go, activate, communitrons and whatnot. So I just want to make sure that I place the decoupler and then I'm going to be placing some sort of fairing adapter. Yeah, that works too. Fairing shell, look at it, small, dinky, you know, it doesn't need to be really special. It's got to be a simple design so it can be designed and launched quickly. That being said, reaction wheels and then I'm be looking at this guy plus the cheetah engine I mean cheetah engine is fantastic in terms of Delta V and the performance in terms of in vacuum so I really like that one and at the bottom I'm gonna be placing the Bobcat for the ascent stage I think that gives us 7.8 thousand Delta V meters per second and that's more than enough to get us to Duna and Eve and <laughs> probably even Jewel. However, we don't have the antenna range for the Jewel yet. Okay, so let's talk the launch platform. Launch platform, we want to make sure that we have something, I guess something basic. We don't really need it to be that advanced. So I was thinking something like, let's see, Saturn, no Saturn, something simpler. Atlas, Atlas could work. Okay, uh, do we have any Atlas launch tower? No, that's too big. Oh, that looks decent. Yeah, we just place a couple of these and then we're golden, actually. Yeah. Shall we place Atlas V? Oh, that looks actually quite nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that one. That design actually looks very, very appealing to me. All right, that's the launch tower. Let's put umbilicals. Second umbilical on the transfer stage. Yeah, I need to actually place it a little longer, so come on. Okay, a little longer, yeah, it needs to reach the rocket. Do we have that one? If I place it that it's a little bit longer, did I reach it? Almost, got it, connection, perfect. Right, okay, let's make sure that we roll it out to the launch pad and then we shall be launching the damn thing. Now, guys, 
I mean, I've already launched and there are gonna be the two of the same. So I've actually, one on the big screen, you have the Duna Pro. On the picture in picture, you have the Eve Pro. So I figured you might want to see both of them launch simult simultaneously because repeating the same content twice, I don't really believe in that. They have the same ascent profile and they're gonna be parked in the same-ish orbit. 100 by 100, equatorial and one will be in 103 by 103 and another is going to be in 105 by 105. So all in all, both of them will be placed in roughly the same uh, equatorial, you know, inclination and everything. So there we go. They are up and ascending and then once we get there, hopefully we will be getting in the... Okay, I'm trying to maintain thrust weight of 1.7. Oh, look at it go. Beautiful. I love the flyby picture. I mean, it's really, really nice. Okay, so uh, we will be going pointing now further down range. It's a real little bit steeper ascent profile, but we will be fixing that in the higher atmosphere levels. Current apoapsis is around 20 kilometers. And then we are burning. Oh, it's 2.12. Okay, let's crank it down. So as you can see, both of them are going more or less with the same ascent profile. This is just a different angle, so I basically show how does it look on the other side as well. Yeah, all right. So ascending 600 meters per second, same apoapsis, and just making sure that we are well aligned for an equatorial insertion. As said, they are remote controlled, meaning that they, will, they don't have any pilots on board, nor they should. They should be going, and they're gonna be sticking quite a long time in the uh, orbit around Kerbin until their transfer window pops up. Now, I'm, for the transfer window planner, it's not really in sync with the game's own maneuver node planner, and I plan to use the game's maneuver node planner because I think it will be uh, it will be easier just to set up the burn. So that's the way I roll with it. So, so, so all right, uh, as you can see, the E1 had a little bit more shallow ascent profile than the Duna. Duna is currently at 45 kilometers, while E was at 40-ish kilometers. However, both of them will basically be coming to the orbit, okay, detaching, engaging the Cheetah engine, and we'll be dumping the ascent stage. That leaves us 5,000 meters per second in the core stage, so let's just make a circularization burn and then we shall be doing it like that. By the way guys, do let me know in the comments, did you like this picture in picture? I thought when I have two of exactly the same probes showing you one launch after the other, it doesn't really make sense in my head. So I think this way you can get the highlights of the second launch with this one being completely shown. So I think that's the format that I would like that somebody shows to me, so if you guys agree with it, let me know in the comments below, and then future episodes when we're launching like five same probes, it will be something similar to this. So, okay, I am using basically the flight uh, computer to execute. We are expanding the solar panels, we are extending the chute, and we will be opening up the, all of the antennas, just to make sure that we have the connectivity and whatnot. Look at it go. Beautiful. So in 50 seconds we will be circularizing. By the way, I'm gonna be setting my target to Kerbin. So that's usually something that I typically always forget. So I have to do it right away. When I set it to Kerbin, then wherever we go, it, the antenna will be always be aiming at Kerbin, meaning we will always have connectivity as long as one of our relays are up. All right. There we go, executing the burn, and that means that we will be circularizing in our parking orbit. There we go, beautiful. I really like this probe because it's really simple design and it's jam-packed with experiments. And first experiment will be actually, we can almost conduct immediately after we circularize, and that's Gravioli, because we haven't done the Gravioli science before. So I'm gonna go and do the Gravioli the moment we are circularized, because then the second set of science experiments can and will be done once we leave the Kerbin's sphere of influence. 
and then when we enter Duna or Eve and whatnot. So I really place my thrust or, or place my trust in terms of the these probes can do it. So maneuver node, current orbit, and we're gonna be setting, let's say, to Eve. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, this one will be actually Duna, so I actually created that one, but we said a maneuver node is going to be in one year and 375 days, so I actually went to delete the node and rather make it for Duna. And then it asked me, do you want me to delete the Eve and go for Duna? Yes. So the main screen, as I said, is Duna, and the backup screen, picture in picture, is Eve. The procedure is roughly the same, creating maneuver node and adding alarm for it. So as you can tell, we have the maneuver node set up. It's going to happen in one year and 282 days. And I'm just going to be creating a maneuver node for it. Or sorry, not the maneuver node, alarm. So this is our Kerbal alarm clock. And I'm going to be placing here the maneuver node alarm, so to say. I went with the stock maneuver node planner, but not with the stock alarm. What can I tell you? I'm just like that sometimes. Okay, so... Right. That being said, let's do the following. Now, we're going to be placing three minutes in. And we're going to be half burn time. That's it. And after that, we are going to be placing... Okay, that would be the Duna Explorer Departure. There we go. That's one. And we do the same thing for the Eve one. Okay. That being said, looks good. Now let's do uh, command. We will rename the vessel. The vessel will be named Duna Explorer. All right. Duna Explorer departure and that's the Duna Explorer. So that's it guys. Hope you like the today's episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below and hopefully in the next one we shall be performing the experiments and launching these off somewhere else. So once again guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you like the episode. Do press a like if you, if you feel like it and if you would like to support me then press, press subscribe and I will be seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. This is Grumfork signing off.